Hi, welcome to a winter morning in Chesterfield. Me and Wilson have a look around the ponds today, but what we're going to talk about today on this video is how much it's costing in electricity to run my setups. My setups are the go on tank and the main pond. The main pond is 10,000 litres, 2,250 gallon pond. There's a 50 50 split, it's insulated, polycarbonate sh uh, sheets, and also it's got a window, window that's insulated. Apart from the main pond, we've also got this grow on tank, which is an IBC holding about 700 litres of water. It's heated to around 20 degrees and it's got 10 fish in there at the moment. As you can see, it's got a bit of insulation around the outside with some thermal uh, kingspan sheets and some decking boards. It's also got polycarbonate sheets on the top and all the filter, the pump and the uh, uh, tempest is inside the shed. We're going to have a look how much electricity the, all of the units use and then individually how much the heater is costing on this one. It was a few weeks ago when I started the recording and the setup of this video and over that period we had a hell of a lot of snow, wind, ice and I think it was minus seven for about three, four days. So it gives a good true reflection on the actual running costs. If anyone's got any questions on anything they see on the pond, just write them in the comments below. If you're not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and check out some more videos. These are the loggers we're going to use. We're going to stick one on the disc board at the house and one down on the heater on the shed. You can log as much or as little as you want to data wise. And it can generate the good old graphs that people like to see. I'm under the stairs at the consumer board and I've got the L component SPC Pro 2 connected up ready to log for a week. And the other end of the cable is connected up here inside the consumer board around power supply for the bottom of the garden which is for both sheds both ponds the grow on and the main pond so i'm going to set that running for one week and see what energy is used in total for the bottom of the garden so we've got the heat supply there which basically feeds that socket and it goes out to the aircon uh, air, air source heat pump outside. So I've connected the lead onto that, program the old computer, so I'm going to press and hold, switch it on, when it's running, there we go, start logging. You can see straight away it's pulling 2.5 amps because that heat uh, is set at 16 degrees and it is at minus one outside at the moment. So we'll come back in a week and see what that says. It's a very cold, frosty morning. As you can see, we've had a couple of days of hard frost. The covers are on, the window covers on. And on the grow on one, put the covers on there. One thing that I didn't do was actually cover the manager on business. As you can see, it's just starting to blacken in certain areas. I'm going to guess that's frost. Same on this one. See the frost damage on there. Beautiful sky, nice and clear. Crazy dog. There you go, I've uncovered it. See a better, pic uh, better view of the fish. 
they're fully active, fully working away. And if you look, side of the back of the shower, I've got the food there. You can see there's a mixture. I'll show you what I'm feeding there. It's a mixture of uh, it is wheat germ, different sizes and different uh, suppliers. It really took a hit that has in this last week. That shows how cold it has been. How quick we've got the fish anyway. Like I say, they are fed every two hours on the hour from 6 a.m. through to 8 p.m. at night. You can just see, I'm not sure if you can see it from that angle, but you can just see the steam rising off the water. It just shows how cold it is. It just shows how cold it is. The tube is looking uh, fine. As you can see, another day with glorious clear skies, minus three in temperature and snow sprinkled on the floor. The pond's well covered. And occasionally when it, is, when it gets above zero, I do open the window and let them have a look round as such. Same with the fry in there. All the newbies. See, this, they're well active, they're still eating. Still being fed every two hours. You can see the water's still clear, still working. First thing we're going to look at is the heating cost for the Remora i12 air source heat pump. You can look from the uh, graph, it starts on a Sunday, finishes on a Sunday, so it's, a, it's near a damn it, a full seven day cycle of what it's used. And you can see when it's been on, when it's been off. The high spikes on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday refer to probably the defrost cycle when it pulls its most uh, energy. Looking at the running cost, I'm with Bulb Energy, who I think have just been taken over by Octopus, and I pay for my day rate, which is 7 o'clock in the morning till midnight, 33.79 pence per kilowatt hour. I've used, on the day rate, 17.8 kilowatt hours. On the night rate, which is from midnight till 7am, I've used, I pay 22.12 pence per kilowatt hour, and I've used 10.3 kilowatt hours that equates to two pound 28 at night six pound and two pence a day and a total of eight pound 30 before we look at the full setup and the costs what we need to remember is that we've got two thirty thousand litre very flow pumps running one at 174 watts one at 122 watts we have a 20k variable pump running at 44 watts there's a charles austin air pump running at 44 watts there's also a, a larger air pump running at 65 watts. Then we've got a 55 Evo UV, a 32 watt on the Pond Expert Spin Clean Auto Pump, and then also a 18 watt UV on the other unit. So apart from that, we've got the Oasi ProfiClear Premium Compact that takes five watts when it's running and 870 watts for 20 seconds, three times an hour. The only unknown variable I have on the whole setup is the one kilowatt cloverleaf heater. It's currently running at 20 degrees, but I'm not sure in any way, shape or form how much that is actually costing or even how efficient it is. I'll be able to clarify later either in this video or another video how much the cloverleaf is actually costing. So we'll have a look at the graph now. First impression of the graph is that there's a lot of red on there, which means it relates to it's going to be costing a lot of money. Exactly what's causing it, I'm not 100% sure. We'll have a look at the costings and then we'll go into the reasons behind why it's so high. As you can see on the costings, with the same night rates and the same cost, that we're using 80.9 kilowatt hours at night and 190.3 kilowatts at days over the week, it's cost a massive total of £82.18p. I must admit, the £82.18p is a lot higher than what I imagined. But it included in that is £8.30 for the air source heat pump. 
So in theory, eighty two pound eighteen pence is eleven pounds seventy four per day, of which one pound eighteen pence per day is for the air source heat pump. Now we're going to have a look a lot closer to see what is causing the uh, high costs. Having looked at all the equipment that's fitted to the setup, I can add all that lot up and equate to about 550 watts of energy being used 24-7. That does not include the 1 kilowatt cloverleaf heater. So what I'm going to do is get an individual logger that you plug in and just control the heater for 24 hours to see what sort of energy it's pulling. One thing that I have found is that the heater, although it says 20 degrees, is actually sat at 22 degrees. So I'm using more energy there to heat the grow on tank to 2 degrees more than what I actually want it to. So I'll log it for what it is and then we'll see what sort of energy it's using and then I'll turn it down and see what we're saving. What I've found is a Tapo smart plug with energy monitoring. Got it from Amazon for 9 99 and it arrived the following day. What you do is set up the app on your phone, you enter your tariffs on there you then just plug your heater in and away it goes, measuring not only the kilowatt hours used, but also the cost in pounds and pence. And you can monitor on your phone through the app and it gives you a graph and a total. Quick and easy. There's a link below in the description if anybody's interested in one of these. So I fitted the plug to the heater and left it just over 24 hours. And this is what we've got. This is a graph downloaded from my phone. If you look at the bottom, there's a graph. That graph is for just today's usage from midnight through till 7 p.m. when I took it off. I initially put it on at 6 p.m. last night and that will reflect, the yesterday's usage will reflect in what it says at the top this month. So today from midnight till 7 p.m. it's used 11.134 kilowatt hours but in total from 6 p.m. yesterday until 7 p.m. today it's used 15.776 and cost £5.31. That's amazing. I never thought that the Cloverleaf would cost that much. It's actually tripled the cost of what the i12 Remora air source heat pump is costing to run 2,250 gallons. So that answers where most of the electricity is being used. I'll do a breakdown later of exactly what is used on what items. To do a quick summary on the costings, as you can see, it costs £5.31 per day for the Cloverleaf one kilowatt heater to be running at that temperature. Since that video, I have turned the temperature down from 22 down to about 17 degrees and the cost has dropped dramatically. Just to put it into some perspective, the Remora i12 air source heat pump was costing £8.10p, uh, I think it is, a week to run. The Cloverleaf was costing £5.30 per day, so a massive difference. It equates to about £37 a week for the Cloverleaf on its own. Add the £37 to the Cloverleaf and £8 for the air source heat pump. It means that all the equipment for the pond has cost me about £35 a week. A lot better than just the £37 it's costing for the Cloverleaf. So like I say, I've turned that down and that's costing just a couple of pounds a day now to run. And the temperature is sat at about 17 degrees, same as the main pond. Where the video was initially set out to show me how much it was costing me to run my pond, it's actually highlighted a massive thing that I've taken for granted, and that is the cost of heating the cloverleaf. A lot of people tell you this, and I'm not sure there'll be somebody commenting in the bottom, you don't have to heat your pond, you don't have to cover your pond. You can just let it to uh, leave it to nature and the, the fish will be all right. The difference is I want to heat the pond, I want the fish to continue growing, continue eating and to continue fighting any parasites or any issues they've got. But again, that's all down to personal choice. If you've watched this video so far, thanks a lot for staying so long. If you're not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and check out some more videos. From the beautiful Sunday afternoon in Chesterfield, happy ponding.